So welcome to this uh, particular session. It's all about what year the certified forensic fraud examiner CFFE course, which is a postgraduate qualification, right? For you to do CFFE, we recommend that you do CFFE immediately after your CPA. It's quite a straightforward, uh, a straightforward uh, course, which very many people do not know its importance. If I were you, these are some of the things that I would really plan to do immediately after my CPA. I mean, this course, if I share my screen here, and please let me know whether you are able to see my screen. Please let me know whether you are able to see my screen. If you're able to see my screen, thank you so much. Great. So it's a course that has got uh, three levels, three modules. Each module has three subjects. So we have module one, module two, module three. So we have module one having introduction to forensic accounting and audit. Module two is fraud and the corruption schemes. Module three is the overview of the legal and justice system. And then you go to module two, law related to fraud, principles of law of evidence and the trial process. We have what we call planning and the conducting formal investigations. Module three, fraud prevention and detection. This is very important. Yeah, all of us as experts of uh, forensic fraud examiners who need to be able to know the various fraud schemes, need to know what we need to do to prevent them from occurring. So we need to detect and know how do we prevent them from occurring, right? And then we have what we call fraud risk management. And then of course, there shall be an integrated case study and a workshop. The last one basically is a practical, is a practical paper is a practical paper. You know, Kasneb now is moving to words, making uh, all their qualifications practical based, practical based. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the very first thing you're supposed to know is that uh, we have quite a big difference between, quite a big difference between what and what? A big difference between auditing and forensic, for example, investigations. Remember that a forensic, a forensic investigator, he'll quite pretty much rely on the methodology of auditing. He'll do like what we call planning. I mean, he'll be able to sample out. He'll be able, in this case, at the end of the day, uh, gather evidence. But now here is where the major difference comes in. Of course, after gathering evidence, we expect him just like the other auditor, just like the auditors, we expect him to come and give us an opinion, an opinion. But you see now the forensic auditor, in most cases, the forensic investigator, in most cases, his work will be used in some court of law, in some court of law as evidence. So in that case, a forensic investigator must know, for example, when you are gathering evidence, how do you write it down? How do you prepare affidavits? Because you'll be working a line with line side by side with who? With the lawyers to be able to prepare what can be admitted, what is admissible in any court of law, in any court of law. We know that in most cases, many cases, fall down on their face because of what here yeah, evidence how the evidence was collected that this evidence is not admissible we cannot admit this evidence because of a few things here and there that were omitted for example signatures etc poorly done affidavits etc so we'd want in this case here to have a situation where forensic investigators are able to develop what will be relied upon by judges to make what here yeah, decisions, to make their decisions. Now, 
I would want to talk about uh, something uh, small here. If you give me a minute, and the, please, I hope you're still uh, doing what you are. You're still uh, calling in your friends to join us. I hope still you're calling in your friends uh, to join us. Great, great, great. Okay. Now, so I would want to begin basically today by looking at what we call the famous what is fraud, first of all? What is fraud? What is fraud? We are told here that fraud, fraud, I can start straight away with a defining here what fraud is. Fraud refers to a deception that is what? Intentional. And the cost by an employee or an organization for personal gain. In other words, fraud is a deceitful activity used to gain an advantage or generate an illegal profit. Also, the illegal act benefits the perpetrator and harms other parties involved. Harms other parties than what here yeah, involved. Right? So, for example, it could be some traffic offense that you have gotten into. So you get into this traffic offense, what will happen? Of course, you'll get the policeman telling you, hey, you know what? Just give me a thousand bob, right? So you end up giving him the a thousand bob, right? So once you give him this a thousand bob, but remember this on the road. I mean, there are very many stakeholders involved. We have got other road users. This traffic in offense, for example, if it was obstruction, you're obstructing and you get away simply because you have given a thousand, you will not be punished. Chances are you repeat the same mistake. You will go in this case, you're obstructing in future. And of course, uh, there is a very big possibility that it may cause an accident. These are thousand you have given to this policeman. Remember this policeman is uh, in employment, he's earning a salary. And then you are giving him a thousand, Bob, which is not well defined within what year is compensation uh, package. So he's profiteering illegally. That's a fraud. Right. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, again, once you committed this offense, there is another stakeholder called the state. The state would have gotten some fine. So we are saying that uh, for this particular activity that you have uh, undertaken to be classified and uh, as a fraudulent activity, there must be, in this case, yes, some illegal profit being made some by some one party, and there must be other parties, in this case, you are losing, including the party, of course, who have given this money who has given this money out to this policeman is also losing in the, is being conned. Is being conned. Now, as a gentleman, listen and listen to me very well. I'm still going back to share this. And I would want us to look at uh, what we call a fraud triangle. The fraud triangle is used to explain the reason behind a fraud. It's used to explain the reason behind what here, yeah, a fraud. For people to engage in some of these fraudulent activities, at times, they are basically pushed. Like I know of some policemen. This policeman is a traffic cop. It's a friend of mine. He told me he went into there, very saved. He was uh, really swearing that, you know what? I will never ever accept any bribe on the road. I'll never do this and this. But again, you realize that these policemen, look at the salaries in this case here, yeah, these guys are paid. I mean, some of them have a gross of 30,000, 40,000, and they're family men, right? 
So with 40,000 and this uh, quite uh, high inflationary, hyperinflationary economy, you will not be able to make your ends meet. You can't provide for your family sufficiently with 40,000 gross. So one of uh, the fraud triangle, fraud triangle component tells us that, hey, at times in this case here, you could be forced. There is an incentive. Why do you do this? I mean, right? So for us to be able to understand this concept very well, I have the fraud triangle with me here because this is the first lesson. I don't really want to belabor explanation. So in this case here, we have our fraud triangle here. You can see it, it's a three-legged, three corners. In this case here, what here? Triangle. So an opportunity must be there. This is a traffic policeman. When he's on the road and we have said he's poorly remunerated, chances are this guy will get an opportunity. People giving in. At times you try to say no, but somebody splashes a thousand before you. They do like that a hundred times. I mean, chances are you may easily do what here. Yeah, you may easily get yourself entangled in this fraud web, the fraud web. So when you say opportunity, opportunity refers to circumstances that allow fraud to occur. In the fraud triangle, it is the only component that a company exercises complete control over. Examples that provide opportunities for committing fraud include, we have got weak internal control, controls. So you don't have controls. So this person comes and sees, I mean, this is a till box, a money cash box, and there are no controls at all. Poor tone at the top. If the senior managers, I mean, are not against the fraud, actually some of them are also into fraud, then automatically you are giving everyone else an opportunity to do what you have to steal from the company and even from the others, right? Then we have inadequate uh, accounting policies, ETC. And then we have the fraud triangle incentive, the second corner. The second corner is incentive. Incentive alternatively called pressure refers to an employee's mindset towards committing fraud. Examples of things that provide incentives for committing fraud include what is it that can really incentivize you to think of uh, also engaging into fraud? Bonuses based based on a financial metric, like what, ladies and gentlemen, our directors are normally paid. You'll get directors, in this case, you're being told that you'll get a bonus if the income hits 200,000, 200 million. So what they'll do, they shall be forced, in this case, to engage in creative accounting. And when they do creative accounting, that is fraud. Common financial metrics used to assess the performance of an employee, our revenues and net income. Bonuses that are based on financial metrics create pressure for employees to meet targets, which in turn may cause them to commit fraud to achieve the objective. Investor stroke analyst expectations. So here you are, ladies and gentlemen, you, do, you would want really to do what you are to please your investors. Then at the end of the day, you may be forced to become a thief. Personal incentives, we have personal incentives. Personal incentives may include wanting to earn more money. They need to pay personal bills, like gambling addiction, ETC. ETC. Ladies and gentlemen, now once you have committed the fraud, because of course there was an opportunity, and then of course, uh, because in this case here, there is an incentive, something really pushing you towards stealing, now you will come and rationalize. Rationalize, so the third corner. Rationalization refers to an individual's justification for committing fraud. Examples of common rationalization that fraud committers use include, they treated me wrong. I had to steal because these people hate me. An individual may be spiteful towards their manager or employer and they believe that committing fraud is a way of getting payback. Upper management is doing it as well. A poor tone at the top may cause an individual to follow in the footsteps of those higher in the corporate hierarchy. There is no other solution. An individual may believe that uh, they might lose everything, for example, losing a job, unless they commit what here, yeah, they commit fraud. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a very serious cause where we are right now with all these things you hear, people talking about wash, wash. I mean, those are very good types of what here, yeah, uh, fraud schemes, wash, wash, where you get somebody who has some big, junk of money they have stolen. And then they'll tell you, hey, help me clean this. So at the end of the day, the same money can get into the bank system. 
in the bank system, and then we shall be able to utilize it as clean money. So you're washing like that. So it's important that uh, we as accountants become great fraud examiners for purposes of our uh, reason gentlemen, ensuring that we shall be able to put proper internal controls, ensuring that we shall be able to fight for employees, for them to get proper compensation from the company, so that at the end of the day, we shall be able to stop pilferage from these organizations. So we have this course, especially the module one, already for the guys who are coming from CPA, the first paper, this first paper, you shall be exempted from the first paper. You're only doing two papers in this level. In this level, you're only doing uh, two papers. Which papers are these? You're only doing two papers. I hope you are able to see my screen. You are doing fraud and corruption schemes. I'm very good at this. We are doing overview of the legal and justice system. All right. So I would want to really welcome to welcome you to RCM Online College. Come and do this course with us. It's quite. Uh, it will not even stop you from doing anything um, uh, in your life. These are qualitative papers. No computations. Right. Like the students that I did with this thing in the semester, previous, I think last semester, but one, they passed all of them. I had 18 students, they passed all of them, right? Right? So it's important that we get uh, into this qualification and do it. Our normal fees is 6,000, but I'm so sure that uh, most of you here who are my students are used to the 4,000 fees. So I'll be able to give you an offer so that you join us. Currently, I only have one student called Kelvin who is registered there. Eh? I'm even wondering how do I start uh, teaching only one student? No, no, no. I would want you guys to come and there, uh, really join me for me to be able to start this class afresh, if possible, from tomorrow. I hope I've given you a snippet of what CFFE is about. And I hope I've made the subject look interesting to you. And I'll also upload this video on YouTube. Please, uh, should you get it there, don't forget to basically copy the same and do what here share with your friends so they can get to hear about this. Our pay bill number, for those of you who would want to pay like today, is 402-9569. I repeat again, pay bill number 402-9569. Account number is your name. Account number is your name. Once you pay, please send the payment message to 0719-0719-525,000. 0719-525,000. So is there anybody who has a question regarding the presentation? It's my hope that you liked it short, but I really hope that you liked the presentation. 